Hey everybody, uh, thanks so much for joining today. Um, we are going to kick this thing off in a couple minutes. Uh, we're gonna let a few people uh, kind of come in um, in a moment. Um, but thanks so, again so much for joining. Uh, myself, John Alexander, uh, we've got JP uh, as well from our team. Um, and yeah, we're gonna be running you guys through uh, a lot of the new stuff that we've been working on. Um, and some circle back of some feature updates and things like that from the last webinar. Um, and so, uh, yeah, really excited for you guys to be joining us uh, today. So uh, we're going to give it maybe about 30 more seconds um, and uh, we'll kick things off. Um, I'm right now just on our, on our homepage, uh, Shofa.tv. I know a lot of you are existing customers. Uh, in case there are maybe a few of you who have never used this software before, maybe here for the first time. Uh, we are uh, Showflow. We do live event production software for a variety of different industries. Um, they are range from corporate events uh, for corporate rundowns and things like that. Uh, also uh, sporting uh, events for game scripts and game presentation and that types of things. Uh, and then also even uh, esports and broadcasts, uh, even house of worship. Um, so really touching a lot of those different uh, the different places as far as the different features and functionalities that we uh, that we have. So if you are curious, go to our website. Um, you can check out the industries based on what industry you're in um, and investigate some uh, features and functionalities if, if this is your first time. And uh, if you have any questions as you're in discovery or anything like that, uh, you can always at any point in time um, use this uh, chat bubble in the bottom right hand corner and we can answer questions, everything from workflow related to, uh, you know, trials and uh, support stuff and anything like that. So uh, again, Shofa.tv, uh, kind of check us out. Um, awesome. Well, let's kind of kick things off here uh, to give you guys a little bit of a rundown of what we're going to be going over today. I know it was out in the, or was sent out at least in the initial email and on the sign up. Um, we're going over a few updates. Uh, the first being um, an update to our global element manager or uh, we also call it GEM uh, for short, uh, which this will uh, more directly impact uh, the sporting customers who are using this. I know there are a handful of kind of broadcast esports that are using GEM, uh, but this kind of feature update will highlight um, for most of you uh, using it in sports. Um, after that, we're going to go over our new prompter updates. And some of you might be joining for the first time and are totally unaware that we even uh, have prompter software. Um, today we're going to be focusing mostly on the updates uh, to that. So if you do want to kind of discover more, definitely check out our Learn website, um, learn.chofa.tv, and you can get more of a high-level overview of what the prompter software is. Uh, today we're going to be uh, directly going through the enhancements that we've made uh, off of the previous webinar uh, that we went over um, uh, last quarter. So. Uh, and then lastly, uh, we're going to be going over a new beta for our export functionality uh, for PDF export. Really excited about this one. Um, also going to introduce you uh, later on to a new face. I know you've been looking at uh, JP and I for the last couple, but uh, introduced to Croy uh, from our product team who's going to be running you through that and talk to you a little bit more about uh, some beta options and stuff like that for those of you who are always eager to kind of try the new stuff uh, that we're working on. So. Um, let's kick it off with a poll. Uh, we, I know we do this pretty often, but it is helpful for us to just get a better understanding of who's attending. Um, so this is based on the industry uh, that you are in. Some of you might be across different ones, but maybe the primary industry that you focus most of your productions on, uh, throw those uh, submissions in there. Uh, we'll give it a little bit uh, for some of those uh, responses, and, um, and then we'll actually probably share that uh, with everybody. But um, yeah, you want to close it out? Cool. So awesome. Looks like we got majority in corporate, uh, which is fantastic. Uh, welcome back. Uh, some sports, uh, which was, you know, is expected. Um, a lot of you might be still uh, in season or preparing for, for the, uh, the Super Bowl this weekend. Uh, also some broadcast worship uh, and things like that. So thanks so much for uh, submitting that. And let's just jump, jump right in here. So the first thing we're going to talk through is or show you is our um, uh, the, the gym updates. So I'm actually going to navigate over to and actually, uh, sorry, uh, one more thing on questions. So last time you guys submitted a lot of questions throughout this, continue to do those in the chat. 
Uh, JP is going to be moderating moderating those and replying to probably replying to some of the direct ones mm -hmm. um, if they're pretty simple answers. And I'll be queuing up some that we can address uh, at the end of this. Uh, and I know last time we did cut the webinar a little bit short because we had a lot of questions um, and we followed up with some email answers, but we are going to kind of try to stick around a little bit. Uh, we've carved off more time uh, to help continue to answer those if you guys have any uh, any questions at all. So uh, awesome. So I'm right here. I'm just in a example event uh, in Showflow and you can see uh, we've gone after the Space Jam, uh, which I love. Uh, you got a Space Jam event right here. I have an example uh, game script, or you can also think of this as a rundown uh, for those of you in corporate. Um, and just going to fire this thing up. You can see pretty simple looking game script right here uh, with all the elements, uh, some timing, you know, all the video board, PA scripts, stuff like that. Uh, the new updates that we've added is in the top right hand corner, you're going to see the kind of the insert modal for the element manager and um, kind of just moving right to left uh, right here. And just to remind some of you guys, we've got on the left-hand side, this is your rundown or your game script, all the element names. On the right-hand side, this is uh, all of your global elements that you've saved in that database. Um, the, the first thing adjustment that we made, and a lot of this uh, has come from a lot of awesome feedback from a lot of you uh, in the sports industry who've been using it uh, all of 2018 after we rolled out this feature. Uh, so again, really appreciate all the feedback you guys had. Um, first update we've done is we've consolidated uh, two different fields into one. Um, so previously we had a uh, an option to categorize elements um, in addition to tags. And just through some feedback and our own internal conversation just found that um, wasn't a clear distinction between which what you should you know categorize something versus tag um, and so what we've decided is to consolidate those into multi tags so you can now apply multiple tags to single elements um, which just makes it a lot easier so for those in sports some examples could be labeling you know pregame uh, labeling promotions labeling even sponsors like coke or pepsi or something like that um, just to help for helpful formatting for filtering locating and things like that as you're kind of looking to build out or add elements into existing game scripts. Um, so that's the first thing. Uh, the next you'll see is we have um, some number icons next to the elements. Uh, that number icon represents how many times that element is active in the current uh, game script that's over here on the left hand side. Um, so if you drag something in for a second time, uh, we're going to tally up that to two, as you can see. Um, and then also, uh, in addition to kind of active versus inactive, uh, you'll see over here on the left-hand side, the purple kind of highlight, uh, that just represents an element that is active in that game script. Um, so really helpful for just as you're building out a, a show, um, seeing the things maybe that you have to throw in, uh, getting a real clear indicator of uh, things that you might need to work on, or maybe if, if elements are never active um, more than once, this could be a good indicator of there might be an error in there and you can kind of fix it that way. Um, another just really simple thing that we added uh, is the ability to quickly delete an element on the left-hand side. So now you'll see when you hover over any uh, element through the whole rundown, you'll see this little trash can icon. Uh, this will ask you, um, you know, when you just click the trash icon, it's going to give you a confirmation uh, and then just click that again. It's going to remove that element. Uh, and then of course, as before, you can at any point in time drag and drop uh, these elements uh, throughout the rundown, and that is our updating uh, in real time. Um, lastly, I wanted to show just a little hidden one. Um, if you go into your element manager, this is where you're building out these this database of, of uh, your different elements. Uh, you can see we also now uh, have the, the tag fields, and you can see all the multiple tags. Um, a little workflow kind of tip for those of you who maybe build stuff out in format of sponsorships or pre-games and stuff like that. You can actually filter tags uh, right here based on the view by just selecting the tag that you'd like. And once you do that, you're going to see it's pre-filled right here in the top. Um, now, if I add a new element in here as I'm working, it's going to automatically apply that tag uh, to that element. So hopefully that can be helpful as you're maybe cranking away or building out some stuff in preseason or even uh, making updates uh, during the season as well. So uh, I believe that's kind of 
uh, most of what we wanted to show for, for this. As always, continue to let us know any feedback or uh, thoughts, ideas, um, uh, as you're kind of continuing to use this through the rest of this year. So um, cool, let's jump over to the prompter stuff. Um, I know a lot of you in corporate probably really uh, looking forward to this one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump over to a, actually a different uh, event, um, which we've got a pre-filled kind of more corporate -y rundown uh, to kind of walk you through some of this stuff. Um, and Croy's gonna talk to this stuff a little bit more, but again, we rolled this out uh, I'll probably maybe three three months ago, a couple months ago, something like About that. that much, yeah. uh, and you guys have been awesome. We, we demoed it last quarter webinar, um, had some really good feedback even on the webinar, uh, which was great. We keep notes of all that stuff. And um, we took a really good pass at um, making some updates and changes. And I'm really excited. We're really excited to kind of show you some of those uh, new changes that we've made. So again, jumping into a uh, existing rundown right here. Um, you know, again, a lot of pre-fill kind of demo content. I think the most significant thing to kind of make note of here is we have two different columns for script content. Um, and this also just we're aware as people have been using this and even just before releasing Prompter, uh, people have been using Showflow for stuff like presenter notes, um, bullet points, putting that up on uh, DSMs on the stage. Uh, and so we've just got two different uh, layouts to kind of show you the two different examples. So whether that's a fully scripted show or more of a presenter notes format uh, and kind of how that can present in this, uh, in this new update. So I'm just gonna jump in real quick. And first I'm gonna show you kind of the, 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 the formal kind of full, fully scripted type of uh, look in here. So I'm actually gonna, um, and to activate this, uh, I'm just, there's two ways you can do it. One is using the view. Uh, in the top right, this little eye icon, you can jump down to prompter view that way, uh, or you can even take the column that you want to take into the uh, prompter view by clicking that down arrow in that column, then going to take to prompter view. And uh, that's going to jump you into the prompter. So let's start by the obvious. Uh, we, based on some feedback, we've actually adjusted the, the coloring of the background to simple kind of black, white, and uh, like an off gray or a dark gray. Um, came from a lot of feedback, makes total sense in the scenarios that you guys are using this on. Uh, and so that's the, the first kind of obvious one. Um, the next is the read arrow. So the read arrow is something that is enabled or disabled uh, by pulling the right panel window uh, in this view. And you can see right here, we have read arrow activated. Um, by default, read arrow and item info, which I'll get into in a moment, will be active uh, by default when you first jump in. But those are things you can toggle on or off. Back to the read arrow, uh, we've now added the ability to uh, rearrange this arrow. So you can actually drag this arrow uh, based on the need um, for this window. Um, so depending on what the view looks like, what your output looks like on a DSM or even a, prompt or a teleprompter software, our teleprompter um, you know, view, uh, you can just drag and drop that to kind of fit your, your personal kind of preference there. Um, the, and then, yeah, so then the next thing is uh, the item info. So this came again from a lot of great feedback. Uh, we've now brought in the item info or I can, you can also think of that as your, the item name uh, of that element uh, is right here. So you can see we've got uh, item three has an item name uh, of the live performance studio 18. And then this is the script content uh, right here below that. So item info again, uh, enabled by default, you can disable that uh, if you'd like. Um, the next thing, as far as like fully scripted, uh, we've also allowed based on, you know, some good feedback from a lot of you is continuous scrolling. Um, so this was, uh, something that was not in the first option definitely makes sense for how you guys are using this as, as far as fully scripted shows. And so now with this um, and you and uh, if you have the auto scrolling enabled or you activate auto scrolling, some of you might remember from last time, just simply press space bar. This will continually to, or this will continue to scroll through um, multiple elements and through the entire rundown. Uh, you can, of course, pause it by pressing space bar. Um, you can speed it up by pressing down arrow, slow it down by uh, up arrow, shift space bar will move it in reverse. 
Um, and then again, spacebar kind of stops that right there. Um, I'm not going to go through a all of the features, but just some other quick ones that just to remind you guys, or those of you might be looking at this for the first time in this view, if you have editing permission or that user that's accessing this view has editing permission, they can come in here and edit the content directly in line, uh, bold, italicize, all that type of stuff uh, right from within uh, this kind of edit menu. Um, and then again, the other stuff that you can do, bold, all caps, horizontal mirroring, um, and then a single item, which uh, I'm going to talk about uh, right next. So it's kind of a little bit on uh, some of these kind of quick uh, new updates that we've made. Uh, let's jump over to the other scenario of using this, which is more of the presenter view, presenter notes uh, functionality. So to do that, I'm actually going to jump over to the other column, which we had called the presenter notes. Um, so this little drop down is where you're selecting the content that you want to view or you want to present in this view. So I'm just going to go to the presenter notes um, and I'm going to just find a, uh, an element. Here we go, this item three. And I'm going to activate the single item um, and uh, kind of portray that right here. So as you can see right here, we're only showing element three or item three. Uh, with the the bullet points, if I want to disable the the read arrow, you can see I can do that, make it a little bit cleaner. Uh, also, a little tip, you can make that full screen if you want to get rid of some of those tabs or, or menus and things like that. Um, and then the biggest thing here is we've now allowed the ability to uh, advance to the next element um, or to the next uh, presenter note uh, by using the right arrow uh, key. So really easy to just quickly, as you can see, just press the right arrow, jump to item four. Uh, again, do that again, jump to item five uh, and so forth. So uh, real quick and easy to continue to, and again, this is meant to be outputted on that DSM, uh, wherever you're kind of uh, presenters, whether that's somewhere on stage, something like that for them to reference, um, you know, when that talent's uh, up, up, on, uh, up on stage. So um, yeah, I mean, that's, I guess that's most of kind of the updates there. Again, uh, if you guys, this is, um, as of right now, uh, something to note, the, the, the element manager updates are actually out on production. So those of you who have that or using it, definitely dive in uh, and check those out. This feature is, um, is, as you might notice, is on our kind of staging internally. Um, our goal is to get this out uh, by the end of the quarter, which uh, definitely think is going to happen. Um, and so we're really excited for that there. And then the, um, the next feature we're going to jump into uh, in a moment uh, will be uh, also something that we're testing internally. Some of you are already kind of playing with it, uh, and I'm excited to, uh, uh, to kind of bring Croy up on stage or, or, or in the room um, to uh, kind of walk you through our, the last feature here, which is the export, uh, and talk a little bit about um, kind of the beta and uh, you know, just some of the success we've had there. So Croy, jump on. Great stuff. And just to talk a little bit more about the feature uh, prompter view improvements that we made, thank you so much to those of you that spoke up passionately and told us this wasn't really meeting our needs and we needed to be a little bit different. Uh, in fact, in last quarter's uh, session, so please send in your feedback, your questions. Don't hold back. We really do want to ensure that the product we create meets your needs. Yeah, we had some great feedback sessions with a lot of the attendees from last webinar to really help shape what Prompter has become. So as we release this out um, to all of you, look forward to continuing hearing feedback on how to improve Prompter and, and all the use cases that you might find value in it as well. So, um, well, hey, it's great to be here with you. My name is Croy, and I'm glad to be recently joining the product team here at Showflow. What I'm going to do is uh, talk a little bit about uh, our export feature. Right. Everything we're doing at Showflow ideally is building software to make producing shows easier. And specifically in, in this feature that we're looking at is really about the efficiencies and flexibility of getting a rundown or a game script into the hands of your crew. Right, That might be done through a mobile or a tablet, and a lot of times it's done through a printout right, or an export. So we've invested some time on really trying to improve the performance and flexibility of our export functionality uh, so excited to show that off today. And really the hope in me showing this is to show what is happening internally, some things we're working on that we can get a 15 to 20 or so customers that might be interested in being a beta customer to test out prompt, uh, sorry, to test out export, 
uh, as we roll this out kind of incrementally, first to a small group of people to get feedback then to a larger group so we can make sure it's solving the problem and creating the value that we hope to create with our software. So what I'm doing here is I am back in this same uh, rundown that Johnny was using to show off Prompter. It's an example corporate event. And you'll notice uh, for this site, I have PDF export beta. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that and show off a few new things going on with what's possible with a new export. I'll just kind of orient us a little bit. Right here we have uh, what we call presets. I'll talk about it in a moment. Have the ability to change some customization, page orientation, row size, uh, paper size, some different options even for our international customers, A4, A5. Um, and then we get down to column visibility and also additional options. So let's talk in this scenario. Um, let's say we wanted to create a specific uh, printout and an export for uh, maybe, maybe an A1, someone in audio. We might recognize, okay, I want, uh, let's take presenter notes off, let's take video off, prod notes off. And as you can see, I'm, I'm customizing my export uh, that I'm going to be printing out for a specific role. Right. Um, and a good way to think about this also is I might have a role I need to have an export for consistently, like audio, video, um, could be a, a script for a PA read, any of those examples that in any given show, you know, there is a consistent responsibility that you want to focus and export just on that role. And that's really where presets comes in. So right now I have it as just a, a default, but in this scenario, let's say I wanted to, I already had a, a preset created for audio, or I wanted to create a new preset. I can choose to select the preset I've already um, created before, or in this scenario, maybe I want to create a new one. So let's talk through uh, maybe creating a video preset real quick. You know, maybe I want lights on for that, audio off, video on. Great, let's go here, create a new preset. Able to just simply, I'll just tie that video for now. And what's happening is we're creating a preset uh, of all of the settings you currently have in that export. So that next time you come back into export, you just select the drop down, select video as your preset, and all of those settings carry over. And the goal here is really creating efficiencies, right? Um, we know that we've got to get the game script or the rundown into, um, into the crew's hands. So how can we help you do that most efficiently and consistently time after time again? So uh, for this example, let's kind of preview this. I've done all my edits, great. This is what it looks like, this, okay, I'm liking it, but ah, uh, there's a page break where I don't necessarily want a page break. So let's say in this scenario, I would like for you know speaker one and speaker two to be on the same page together. Um, so I might wanna go back into edit mode, and this is also a really big improvement for export where you can add what's called a custom page break. So if you see the cursor here, I'm scrolling over and every, I can create an insert of a, of a page break above any uh, item row or below any item row, right? So in this scenario, I wanna add a page break here. So that way I know that speaker one and two are gonna be on the same page, can preview that. Okay, great, inserted page break just under seven. And now speaker one, speaker two, same page. So our hope here is, is when we think about our, our, um, our customers, both in corporate and in sports, in sports, there's really simple application for you know, breaking it up in quarters or in periods or halves, however, really to equip your crew more efficiently uh, with content flipping through. We know it's just real time, um, sometimes chaos when, when creating a, just a great experience for, for the attendees. So the hope in corporate as well is if you organize things in day one, day two, session one, session two, ideally being able to just create a more effective uh, export for you guys. So that's all I wanted to talk about there. One of the big things here is we would love for any of you to be one of our, our beta testers, right? To where uh, ideally um, we could get about 15 to 20, like I mentioned earlier. So if you're interested in that, please email feedback at showflow.tv. And in the subject line, just put export PDF or just anything with export. And uh, we will go ahead and get that feature turned on for you. In that email, please make sure you do include the email address you use to sign into Showflow, because that will help us make sure we turn this feature on just for you. And, uh, and we'll set up some sessions to get feedback on how it is for you, what things you're noticing, what additions you might look to, um, to make changes to in the future. So thanks so much. Excited to be sharing these new features for you. I'm going to invite Johnny back up as uh, we close some things out here. Awesome. Thanks, Croy. Um, 
Did um, he want to kind of run through uh, some of the education stuff and absolutely. As well as some of the more feedback? Um, things that we've been doing as always uh, I want to tease our learn.showflow.tv portal uh, there's a lot of great articles there that are going to cover these new features that we discussed today there'll be animations and videos and descriptions of how to do everything but there's also a ton of great content there that'll help you with the stuff that's existed in the app for a long time so please don't be shy about exploring learn.showflow.tv and like Croy just mentioned uh, we're really big on getting feedback right now, and one of the things that you can do is sign up for uh, user feedback sessions or user testing. Um, whether or not you are beta testing our uh, export feature or it's something else altogether. Um, within learn.showflow.tv, there's actually an article, and I will be providing the links in the follow-up email as well for you to sign up for these user feedback sessions. In fact, um, one of the people that had the really great feedback on Prompt Review last quarter did end up signing up for one of those, and it really did affect the direction of the product. So. You want to do this. <laughs> and um, lastly, it's canny.io. It's another way for you to share your feedback with us and see the ideas that other people within the Showflow community are sharing. Have the ability to uh, vote up on ideas that you like or at least see where your ideas stand compared to others. So all really great uh, ways for you to reach out to us and share and for you to learn. Yeah, we're going to throw the, uh, we'll throw a link to that, Canny. Um, uh, our site there uh, in the chat so you guys can uh, take a look. Some of you have already signed up, I know. Um, but a great way to, you know, either submit your own requests, upload others, engage in some of the forums on there as far as like how this is helpful, why it's helpful. Uh, all of those things are, yeah, awesome. Absolutely. And uh, lastly, we are going to be in some, Johnny, you're going to be at a conference? Uh, yeah, so before we get to the questions, um, if you guys are going to NAB, uh, there's going to be some of us out there in Vegas. Uh, I know we got a lot of corporate people. Um, I've, we've met a lot of you out there. And um, so if you're going to be there, definitely swing by. We'll have some stuff coming out of us as far as our booth numbers and things like that uh, soon. So, yeah. Um, yeah, do you want to kind of, we've got, looks like we're kind of wrapping up to the end. I uh, want to be courteous of everyone who gave us 30 minutes. We really appreciate you guys sticking on as long as you have, uh, giving us time today, uh, maybe getting out of the cold uh, wherever you are. Um, but we are going to, I think, stick around a little bit. We yes. have some questions. We do indeed have okay, a few. Okay, cool. Um, can you customize text colors inside of Prompt Review? Uh, yes, you can. The uh, formatting changes that you make within a cell will transfer over to that Prompt Review. However, uh, things like a global highlight or changing the background color of a cell, that will not. Only changes to the actual text within the cell. And uh, can you tell me who is going to control this uh, script view, this prompt review? Um, it is very much was designed with the idea in mind that there would be a, a script or prompter operator that is running this. So it'd be someone else. Uh, there yeah. was also a question about whether or not there's any integrations with things like, um, what is it, SmartQ? Um, but not yet, not, not just yet. Um, yeah, those are great scenarios uh, to submit some of that feedback. Um, we're always curious of other hardwares, uh, softwares you guys are using. Uh, so either you know, submit Please. those requests through Canny, things like that. Um, it's a great way for us to keep a pulse as far as other hardware opportunities or integrations and things like that in the future. Yeah, and uh, another question is, is it compatible with other peripherals, something like a shuttle or scrub wheel? And yes, it is. Uh, you plug it in your computer, as long as the computer uh, can uh, engage with it, then it will control the prompt review as well. Yeah, you'll just map the keystrokes to those, uh, you know, those little controllers. Um, and yeah, so absolutely. We actually have one internally that we've tested and things like that. Yeah, um, let's see here. Um, we've got some requests for being involved in the beta test. Another question is, is there a um, export to other software to use till the prompter features are available? Our hope is actually that this, these prompter features will be available this quarter. Um, and in the meantime, we do have word export, which will allow you to export specifically the script column. And 
uh, output that to whatever your current uh, prompt or software is. Yeah, that's a good, uh, good brings up a good just reminder for those of you who may not know uh, feature in here. We have a word export, so you can click word export and you can actually define the scripts column um, by selecting on the left hand side here the hero. Uh, so whatever the scripts column is or presenter notes, uh, make that the hero content. Uh, you can then override the text size, making it large, uh, small, whatever, uh, and even enable or disable different uh, columns depending on what's not going to be passed through to this script export. And that exports out as a docx file. So you can bring it into Word, save it back out in the text format or any sort of other kind of formatting that you might want to do. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, another great question is does um, uh, that we've got does this work with show color tracking? And absolutely. Um, so that's one of the big benefits in here um, is there's a lot of other just prompter softwares out there. A lot of you have used them, tested them, whatever. Uh, this isn't like a entirely new type of concept. The biggest thing in here, the value is that these elements are or this rundown is connected to the prompter. Uh, so you no longer uh, will have to make updates back into it, re-upload a new text file. Uh, and then also the obvious benefit of show caller tracking. So as your stage manager, show caller, whoever is advancing element to element, that view um, that's set up on a DSM or wherever uh, will automatically change um, with that show caller. So uh, I know somebody asked, like, do you have to have an operator? Um, I think that depends on the scope of the event. Could you, um, you know, manage certain aspects without it? I think you could. It just depends. Again, um, probably helpful to have an operator in front of a screen that's able to, you know, pause it, slow it down, depending on uh, how fast or slow they're reading. Um, or yeah. So hopefully that kind of answers that question. Um, yeah. But but yeah, good point. Good and question. we are a minute over, so I guess maybe this can be one of the last things we talk about. With and that is a question was asked about this new export and whether or not it's only for PDF. The answer is yes right now. So all of the that new functionality that uh, Croy was showing you is only going to be available in PDF right now as part of this beta. Yep. Um, yeah, and then I think the last thing too, or just to, you know, to give, if you guys ever need to get a pulse on kind of some of the other stuff we're working on, also if you want to check out some of these other articles of these features, um, if you go to our FAQ, we have a little uh, link in here called Release Notes, uh, which has uh, more of a comprehensive list of some simple features. At the top, you'll see kind of new feature highlights. Um, that's you know where we've got some of this stuff. We have a good overview in here about the global element manager update, as well as uh, some of the prompter view, and then one of our other recent views uh, that we showed last quarter, uh, which was display view, which you can take a look at there. And we will be rolling out and updating this prompter view uh, shortly uh, once we update it or once we get it to everybody and make that change there. So. Yeah. Um, uh, I think that's probably it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, awesome. Well, thanks so much for joining everybody. Um, if again, if you ever have questions, send us in the in-app chat on the website, email. Uh, again, thanks so much for joining. Um, and this is recorded, so you will all get an email uh, with a recording of it. Uh, feel free to share that uh, with anybody else you think uh, would find it valuable. But yep. Thanks so much, and you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Have a great day. And bundle up. <laughs> Bye. All right.